Greetings, this is another mini video review by the Flashlight Reviewer Self-Built. Today I'm looking at a high output thrower light by XSTAR, the XSTAR S1. I think as you can see looking at it, uh, it's a very substantial light, it's a, certainly a good size. Uh, it's a 3 times 18650 uh, style light with a lot of output and a lot of throw. So to start, let me just show you the reflector. And you can see there, there are three XML uh, cool white emitters each in their own reflector well. If I angle this, you can see the three reflector wells overlap to some degree, but overall, the depth of the combined reflector is quite significant. So you're likely to get fairly good throw. Uh, you're also likely to get some beam artifacts from the overlapping beam wells. This is a common enough occurrence uh, on these types of multi-emitter lights. But uh, you'll see um, full uh, specs and um, beam shots, including outdoor beam shots, on my full review uh, on candle power forms. So to start with, let me just sort of show you the build of the light. Um, I'll start with the battery tube. As you can, you'll see, it's a very substantial light. Take out the three cells, and you can see, looking inside there, it's a solid battery, battery handle uh, with cutouts to fit the size of three um, 18650 batteries, which I'll put back in. Uh, they recommend button top uh, batteries just to make contact with the positive plate at the top. If you look at the tail cap, you'll see there's three individual pistons that are connected to a common base. So basically the three cells have to be run in parallel because uh, they're all connected to one you know, common base and so therefore one common connection, uh, which means a maximum voltage of 4.2 volts uh, in this case. Uh, they don't allow anything other than just the 18650 cells. So you line up attachment points, or I should point out as well, uh, hard to see there, but those are square cut threads and uh, double O-rings, which are very nice. So you line up the contact points, and then you can tighten the cap back on. There's a good number of screw threads, good number of turns. Uh, you'll see there's a grip ring here with attachment points uh, for a lanyard. The light can tail stand, kind of raise ridges there, but it doesn't get in the way of tail standing. The light can also headstand, and it has a crenellated bezel, so if you turn the light on, you can see light escaping uh, under the bezel, so you know that the light is actually on. Now, the control um, interface for the light is entirely done by this control ring in the head. And it's a magnetic control ring, and it has a few options. You can see starting from the left, there's an SOS mode, strobe, a high mode, that's the, always the off position. There's a preset and a select. And although it's hard to see in the light, sort of silk screen here on the control ring where my thumb is, is a little arrowhead, which again, uh, you maybe see it now. Um, this is actually fairly hard to see in practice. This is the indicator telling you where the ring is currently set, so it's currently set to off. If I turn it to the left, the ring comes on high. And you can see that's a very bright beam. Uh, you can also see what I was talking about in terms of the artifacts of the overlapping beam wells. Get it really close. Yeah, it's of course you know, a very bright beam, but you can see in, in the periphery of the spill. The spill is also not very wide, uh, mainly again because of the very deep reflector, uh, but of course at a distance you'll get plenty of light over a wide, uh, wide enough area. So that's the high mode. I'll turn it back off for a minute. Uh, as you can see, quite blindingly bright. You also have a strobe mode and an SOS mode. But what's really interesting about the light is on the modes on the other side. So you have what they call preset and select. So preset, I have preselected to probably one of the lowest outputs that I can do. Uh, the manufacturer claims uh, 30 lumens, which I think is fairly accurate. Uh, you can probably see on the uh, on the camera here an interference pattern. That's the um, reasonable frequency pulse width modulation. It's a little under 500 hertz, and you'll find a detailed examination of that on my review site. Uh, there's no pulse width modulation on high, uh, of course. It's only on the lower modes. So how do you select output modes? Well, the preset mode that I'm in right now is a memorized mode that I set to the lowest output level. All you do is you turn the ring to select, and the light immediately begins to ramp. And you see what it does here is it ramps up, it reaches maximum, there's a brief flash, and then it starts to ramp back down. And when it hits the bottom, it starts ramping up again. Now, one thing you can probably tell looking at that ramp is that it does not stay very long at the lower output levels. I'll show you again here on the tabletop. So you have very little time if you want to select a really low output. All you do at any given point, if you're ready, you just turn the ring back to preset, and now that mode is memorized at that level. 
go back to select the ramp begins again and you see you gotta be pretty fast if you want to capture a low output level uh, basically you'll see a detailed ramping analysis on my website on candle power forums you only have about um, three seconds from max to min and another three seconds from min to max and basically a fraction of a second to select the min mode it does pause about a second at the high mode so you've got more options to select a high output level uh, and that's pretty much a good overview of the light you can see detailed run times uh, and other characteristics of the light on different types of batteries uh, on my website um, it's a little bit different from some others it's mainly direct drive uh, on the most levels on most batteries uh, but depending on the internal chemistry of the individual cells you're using you might see a sort of a, a slightly different uh, runtime pattern but again you'll find a detailed analysis of all that on the website which is at flashlightreviews.ca uh, or you can find it directly on candle power forums just look in the reviews uh, section uh, under the username self-built right, i hope you found that overview helpful thank you very much